Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. We've got another Black Series review for you today and we're going to take a look at the Black Series Mando with complete Beskar armour and the uh, the jetpack. So uh, we're going to jump into it. Do subscribe to the channel if you're new and you won't miss any of the content to come. Do leave a like on the video if you enjoy it. Um, I will be comparing him to the uh, the OG Mando in this video as well. And uh, If you want to you check that video out on the channel, um, there'll be a link in the description below so uh, let's jump into it so first of all as always what are you going to get in the box so you're going to get his um, his rifle now it is slightly different to um, the OG Mando one it is the same sculpt but they've gone for if I can get this into focus for you basically what they've done is they've changed so that the gunmetal grey of these parts at the back and the tongs on the front is just now a, a shinier kind of silver like his Beskar armour. Um, that's not to say that this is supposedly made of Beskar, it's more the fact that they've kind of matched the the paint scheme um, so that it's kind of up to date with um, you know with his armour so that it isn't drastically different because if it was very dull in comparison it would kind of look odd. Um, they've done the exact same thing with the, the blaster pistol. Um, I love this pistol, it looks so awesome. It actually looks better in this in this um, this shiny silver. Obviously you can see the sculpting so it's not just uh, a boring uh, looking thing. You've got the brown of the um, of the, the handle, the, the paint on mine is, is bled a little bit and we'll move on to that and, and, and talk about that when we talk about the figure but um, for the most part obviously that's not every single one so when a paint you know bleeds you can't exactly say that oh this figure is is prone to it because you just don't know um, but yeah I mean looking at this I love the design of um, Mando's uh, blaster pistol and like I say it does look really cool in in uh, in the silver. Um, he does have a holster on his belt for that pistol and we'll move on to that. Um, finally in the box you're going to get the uh, the Rising Phoenix, the jetpack. I'm really I'm kind, of, I'm kind of really pleased to get this because when we saw that um, in you know uh, in, in the season uh, finale and, and you know inevitably we were gonna see it or we wanted to see it and then we saw it and it was awesome and then seeing him master it seeing him utilize it, it was, you know was awesome it is a disappointing um, paint application the sculpt is, is is brilliant they've they've made a brand new sculpt for it because it is a slightly different design of um, jetpack or rising phoenix um, to like uh, Bo-Katan or you know Boba Fett and stuff like that so it's not a reuse which is really nice it's just the fact that I know that it's a completely silver, again, don't know if it's made of Beskar or whatever, but a completely silver jetpack, but this is more of that darker gunmetal grey. Um, and it kind of goes with the, the contrast of the armour, because the armour isn't, you know, bright, in-your-face shiny. It is shinier than, um, you know, the dirty, kind of weathered Mando. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's definitely a different, as you can kind of see if you look at Mando now and then look at the jetpack, it's definitely a very different grey, um, whereas the jetpack was silver. And to be honest, although the sculpting is there in terms of the details of the jetpack, there's no difference in colour or weathering on it, at least you know if we'd have had um, the shine of it and then some maybe grey weathering like this in darker parts to give it some definition it might have been better but um, yeah happy for it to be included and it is just the normal um, peg but this has three pegs so the the blaster hole um, sorry the, bla the blaster rifle has the you know like on the OG Mando has the um, kind of a attachment on the side that can attach it to his back and we'll move on to that um, you know so you can put the blaster rifle behind him this has the three pegs so you've got the central peg that goes into the back and then these um, one goes into the one that the blaster would go in and then the other one is in the back as well so we'll move on to Mando he is a little bit different to the original sculpt which is which is nice I'm glad that they didn't just change the color scheme and keep it as it is um, but yeah we'll, so this stays on there really secure that which is, is is good but we'll move on to some of the intricacies of what that means for for Mando in terms of design I mean, they've nailed it. Mando looks awesome, uh, as ever, as he did on screen. 
I I love that they've got the mud horn signet on the shoulder pauldron. That looks awesome. The fact that they've upgraded him so that he's, you know, his season, uh, kind of the end of the season uh, one, uh, season two onwards, sort of, you know, fully best guard up Mando. Um, you know, they've still got his thigh pad that he can quite upgrade completely. Um, and he's got some browns in there and stuff like that. Um, so he's got his full Beskar, um, you know, armor upgrades. And then the helmet is, is, is like a clean helmet, you know, like the, the OG one, it's rather dirtied, but this one has been kind of, uh, shined up, um, and fixed for him. So he looks awesome in terms of the paint application on mine. It's mostly it's mostly there. There's some areas where you know there's some discolorations that I don't think are weathering. I think that is just a bleed, like you know that's a a bleeding in the paint application process. But um, I could be wrong um, in terms of actual bleeding though. When you look round the figure, you've got some that comes onto his chest piece. Now you know from not afar but from not completely in your face close up he looks awesome and i love mando i think that the mando tv series is one of the best uh, star wars stories because it didn't force it down your throat it gave you the opportunity to really invest yourself in a way that wasn't hey uh, you've got to love this because it's star wars you know you, you even if you aren't a fan of star wars you could enjoy mando and really become um kind of entranced by everything that is Mando um, and uh, you know everybody did it became very very popular and it, it's arguably still is it's kind of still the face of you know Star Wars at the moment but you know in terms of the paint application on mine it's it's pretty much there um, and the design of Mando you know looks awesome um, and I think that they've nailed the likeness I really like you know when you go from the ground up he's got the, the kind of shell bandolier on his shin he's got the the greys and the browns of the boots which look really nice he's, it's got a lot of sculpt work that adds a lot of detail but they do change the the paint scheme in there so that it's not you know it's not just um just sculpted in a color um printed in a color but you know it looks when you look up close you know looking at the the holster the belt you know where it changes from being beskar to cloth um you know in terms of what he would be really wearing on screen the you know the brown and the belt the accessories the belt buckles you know you've got the the weathering the denting and the you know the paint chipping kind of looks on the the armor piece there and you know you've got these are all 3d you know these lines these aren't painted on lines these are that's a 3d sculpt so like you've got a lot of um, detail in the sculpt work rather than just you know painting on some some decils or something but um, again the the mud horn is actually like a risen 3d you know it's a print it's not again it's not a decil which is actually nice I really like that so in terms of like his look um, you know he's, he's an awesome looking figure and I think black series have really nailed him that the OG Mando is one of my favorite black series figures with this guy he is also one of my favorite because it's Mando and it's kind of the evolution of Mando. It's not the best um, uh, in terms of uh, <laughs> kind of they you know working out the efficiency. We'll get onto that, but um, it is mostly the same. It's just that there's some differencing in sculpts. Like if we bring them together now, you can see that. If I can get that into focus, wait. So you can see that the chest plate is slightly different. Um, you know the pauldrons obviously are different because they're new. Um, and then even the the gauntlets are slightly different. Um, the accessories are pretty much the same on the belt and stuff like that, the bandolier. Um, but then coming down again, obviously like the the pauldron, um, like the pauldrons at the top, um, there is a slight difference um, because some of the parts were changed because the character upgraded the armor, but also some of the parts kind of just evolved over time as he got upgraded so like you can see that the whistling birds is is more refined and he's got those on the new ones and and stuff like that so you can see that he's kind of evolved he's still got some of the things that were in the original uh, so they used the base sculpt and then they kind of made him a little bit a little bit stockier you can see and you know the the helmet is virtually the same um again just not the discoloration on it um 
but it does seem like it's a slightly smaller helmet um, again it, it still looks awesome it's just slightly differently sized um, and I think that's just so they didn't make him really you know really stocky if you're gonna make the rest of the body bigger because he's got more armor and that armor is chunkier and more you know there's more going on you can't just make his head big um, but the scaling is still there and and like I say OG Mando is one of my favorites I can get that to focus for you OG Mando is one of my favorites and Beskar Mando is equally as awesome um, so we'll move on to some articulation and basically what I'll, I'll, I'll do is I'll talk about the articulation and I will talk about the jetpack going on there in terms of I'm gonna add it to the articulation uh, section but that's what I meant earlier when I referred to like the efficiency of you know how they've designed the character to work as an action figure and then how they've designed it from a look point of view so first of all we've got the we've got the pistol I'm going to have to fix for you so we've got the pistol I'm going to pop that in the uh, in the holster see this does come out but I'm just going to wedge it past there so I can pop it back in in a second if I can get that to stay I can't get to stay, so <laughs> we're going to move on. Anyway, so in the in the holster, it does look very good. Um, in terms of articulation from the ground up, like I said, because it is mostly the same um, best car Mando as the OG Mando, you're going to get a lot of the same articulation. So really good toe point, really good toe to sky. Um, he'll raise ninety uh, in the front, so he's got a lot of uh, motion. Pretty much go to a uh, fantastic split so that's really good double jointed um, knees so the legs come all the way up and get that to focus again for you sorry um, at the back and then obviously because of that they go all the way back all the way forward and they have that kind of rotating you know so he can get up into kicks and dynamic flight poses and he like Mando uh, Black Series Mando is an awesome figure for toy photography because he's so he looks so awesome and the character actually is very dynamic on screen but also the action figure they did design it to be very um, dynamic and, and be you know articulate um, which is great so in terms of um, you know Mando moving forward like you get to the hip so this bottom portion is like set so um, this bandolier does move a, li a little bit so it doesn't completely you know just get in the way of the articulation there but he's got a bit of a swivel at the hips um, but it kind of springs back so you can kind of push past that and he'll stay um, at those angles so basically it's once you push past that that kind of original position then he'll stay in the position otherwise he'll kind of bounce back a little bit because it's kind of out of the box it's kind of that little bit of stiffness that you used to but once you actually start moving him like you can see he will twist and stay so his articulation there is really good like he will twist completely to the sides um, in terms of a crunch he doesn't have much of a crunch so you can see like forward and back that isn't much but again because of the amount of movement in the uh, the tops of the legs you can really get a bend forward and back to help you with that so that's fine um, in terms of the wrist we've got um, you know the fully let me get that to focus for you again so you've got the fully um, articulated wrist so that he can curl in, hold, whatever. Uh, spins around 360 as normal, which is brilliant. In terms of at the elbow for the arm, that's kind of, you know, you could argue that is exactly 90 or you could just you know, go past 90. That's not bad. I think Mando looks awesome. I like the way he's designed in these arms. They fit in with the figure very well. And I think if you went double jointed on them, it would ruin the look because you kind of look... Um, bit gangly so with these pauldrons um, at the shoulders um, they are hard they aren't rubbery so well they they are rubbery as you can see but they're quite they're quite thick they're quite tough so it will go up over the shoulder but you can see like you can see that it kind of just there you can see it kind of changes its shape a little bit to get over there so it will get up to 90 he will t-pose um, so it will go and you can see the, the you know the mud horn signet there looking awesome but like I say it will just kind of distort so it's not amazing in terms of um, it's not the natural shape that it would be 
um, you can kind of see that it convicts us, but because it's metal and you know Beskar especially strongest metal in the universe, you know it wouldn't wouldn't do that. But the fact that he can get it over is what is important, and then it kind of does push that out a bit when you've done that, but you can kind of bend it back to the arm. But like I say, it will go up and over. Um, so good articulation at the top of the arms, um, and then he will go completely 360 um, at the shoulder as well. So. In terms of the helmet, I think what they've got is in here they've got um, they've got like a dumbbell joint. So he does have some side to side movement, has some uh, up and down, forward and back slightly. Um, but like in comparison to OG Mando, like OG Mando's helmet has a lot more articulation than the new one. I'm get that to focus for you. Um, as you can see, like it's just night and day really in terms of what they've done is they've adjusted Mando uh, in the new sculpt and they've taken away kind of uh, what they've done here and, and they've elongated the neck in the first one um, so he's got a lot more room to tilt and stuff like that but then with the new one they've kind of shortened that so it's closer to the, uh, the, the shoulders um, and it doesn't move as much still moves 360 that sort of thing so um, you could argue it's fine but in terms of articulation OG Mando is the, the superior of the two um, you've got the the sculpted just rubber cape from the same one from OG Mando just slightly darker um, this is kind of like a, a grey with a, a hint of brown in it and then the you know the newer Beskar Mando has the kind of darker grey. Now this is the thing I was talking about as I completely <laughs> break his neck. So you can see that the strap kind of moves and it will align so that the blaster rifle in focus um, will go on the back there uh, like it does on the first one and it will just kind of go in there. It doesn't go all the way in as we remember from the first one um, but it does and the cape is kind of sculpted to do this so that it can account for the shape of that blaster rifle. So that works just the same as the other one. But what you'll see is, um, as I mentioned before, so you've got the, the, the Rising Phoenix, you've got the jetpack that goes into the central peg and then the two supporting pegs above it. Um, the problem is, is, and you know, he looks awesome with his uh, Rising Phoenix on, don't get me wrong, I mean, you know, of course he does, it's Mando. God camera won't stay in focus today um, so you know he looks awesome but the problem is is they've kept the same sculpted cape and that doesn't go over it if that makes sense it's like it's not accounting for that now they either could have gone with a soft goods cape which I do think they should have or done what they did with Boba Fett Deluxe and redesigned the cape that's sculpted to be skinny at the top kind of flexible to hook around the jetpack and stuff like that because I mean he just doesn't like that, that doesn't look right so unfortunately that's that's not been done uh, with that in mind and that's kind of what I was talking about in terms of the efficiency is they've just gone right we'll kind of re redesign him keep some of the things and um, just throw the jetpack in there so what I will be doing I was looking on Etsy shops today um, some some shops that I do keep an eye on because they're uh, really cool things like 3d printing and stuff like that and you know these these makers um, and I'm gonna get uh, a soft goods cape for Mando so it's not too big a deal but in terms of you know versatility like we've talked about before it's Mando can't go wrong with Mando um, you know he is an awesome bounty hunter could be in any uh, corner of the galaxy so you really can't go wrong in terms of a display he's got so much presence as as always and toy photography again which is just just like OG Mando you really can't go wrong so I definitely think you should pick him up because uh, he was one that went quickly the first time um, obviously in the past year shipping and stuff was not normal so you know we can probably account some of it to that too but um, you know he was in high demand so I would pick him up before he you know he hits those second market prices that are ridiculous um, like the deluxe version of him the only reason I wanted that is because of all the accessories that come with it and obviously he does look cool um, but the kind of head the you know the head sculpt of Pascal isn't fantastic but um, you know that's not that's not 
that bad and having a removable helmet was quite a, a cool thing I thought um, so uh, like you know looking at that figure you know and that, that pack that's going for double the price now as standard uh, you know that it retailed at and, and much more I should think um, because it's just you can't get your hands on them um, in terms of an overall score I think Mando is up there. I think OG Mando is my one of my favourites. Um, Best guy Mando, he looks fantastic. It's just the fact that I don't really think they fought through some of the things um, with the redesign, like the jetpack and stuff. So I will give him a nine. He's very versatile, um, awesome looking fi uh, figure. Um, you know the sculpts and the paint, and I, I love all that. And the articulation is, is is pretty damn good. It's just it's a little bit to be desired. So a nine out of ten, awesome figure. Um, yeah, so definitely keep an eye out and try and get your hands on one of these before they go for um, silly money but I hope you enjoyed this video guys and I hope it was informative do subscribe as always and I'm going to leave you with this one and uh, you take care I'll see you in the next one